Egypt's military government has announced 20 Al Jazeera journalists will go on trial for endangering national security and belonging to or aiding a, quote, terrorist organization. The military has accused Al Jazeera of supporting the Muslim Brotherhood, which has been protesting against the government since the army toppled President Mohamed Morsi in July. Three of the journalists, Peter Grest, Mohamed Fahmi and Fahar Mohamed, who have been detained since December 29th. Peter Grest's father condemned the move. It's unbecoming of a great nation like Egypt. It is unbecoming of any civil society to behave like this. It's, de it's demeaning of any community which even pretends to be democratic and fair. The news comes just days after the third anniversary of the revolution that ousted Egyptian dictator Hosni Mubarak. Over the weekend, more than 60 people were killed in clashes surrounding the anniversary. Some 1,000 people were detained by Sunday night in a sign of growing activity by militants. An Egyptian army helicopter was shot down in the Sinai Desert, killing all five soldiers on board. Six people were also killed in a series of bombings around Cairo. Following the weekend's violence, the military government said it would hold presidential elections earlier than its political roadmap had called for. Egypt's top military body has already given its approval for Armed Forces Chief Field Marshal Abdel Fattah al-Sisi to run for the presidency. Sisi led the ousting of Morsi in July. For more on the situation, we go to Egypt, to Cairo, to speak with Democracy Now! correspondent Sharif Abdelkadus. His most recent piece for the nation is called Egypt in Year Three. Sharif, welcome back to Democracy Now! Explain what's happening. Well, Amy, as you mentioned at the outset, uh, these charges that are being brought against uh, journalists at Al Jazeera uh, really mark uh, a frightening escalation in the crackdown on freedom of the press in Egypt. Uh, these charges, uh, many journalists have been detained, but really the decision by the authorities or prosecutors to uh, bring this case to trial is seen by many as unprecedented. Uh, they're the first terrorism-related charges being brought against journalists, and uh, they are being uh, they're brought uh, after the Muslim Brotherhood uh, was declared a, a terrorist organization by the government last month. So there's 20 uh, defendants mentioned in the prosecutor's statement. Uh, there's no names mentioned, uh, although we do know that uh, 16 of them are Egyptian. Uh, they're accused of joining a terrorist organization. Uh, they're accused of uh, endangering national security. There's four foreigners that are listed, uh, two uh, British citizens, an Australian citizen, and a Dutch citizen, and they're accused of uh, conspiring and aiding uh, in the publishing this false news uh, to portray Egypt as going through a civil war uh, and uh, to destabilize the country. So, um, but what we do know also is that there are five Al Jazeera journalists that are imprisoned right now. Uh, as you mentioned, three of them are from Al Jazeera English. They include Peter Greste, an Australian citizen, Mohammed Fahmi, who's a Canadian Egyptian citizen, and Beher Mohammed who is an Egyptian citizen. Uh, both uh, uh, Mohammed Fahmi and Beher Mohammed have been in, uh, held in maximum uh, security wing of Torah prison. Uh, they've been held in solitary confinement for 24 hours a day, uh, no access to sunlight in insect infested cells uh, with no bed. Uh, they were recently deprived of even a blanket and uh, of food being brought in. And uh, their family members have said that they are suffering the effects of what can only be described as this punitive confinement. Uh, the other two Al Jazeera journalists uh, work for the Arabic language uh, channels of the network. One is uh, Mohammed Bedr and Abdullah Shemi, who have been in prison for over five months now. Uh, Abdullah Shemi uh, is on the 10th day of a hunger strike to protest his imprisonment. Uh, so we're waiting to see uh, what, who, what the names are of these uh, 20 defendants, but many presume that at least the three Al Jazeera journalists are named in it. And this comes also, Amy, amidst a uh, wide assault on journalists in the street. Uh, on the anniversary of the revolution, the 25th of January, we saw over a dozen journalists attacked uh, in Tahrir Square. Journalists were attacked uh, outside on the streets. Journalists were shot, uh, covering clashes between protesters and security forces. Uh, journalists are frequently, when they are assaulted by citizens, uh, are accused of belonging to Al Jazeera. And this is a direct result of a demonization campaign of uh, 
uh, Al Jazeera that has gone on for months now in the state, state and private media channels. And what is the Egyptian government saying in response? Well, they say that uh, the, they keep uh, t uh, citing the independence of the judiciary, that this is in the hands of prosecutors and the independent judicial process. Uh, that process claims that uh, the, you know, Al Jazeera was operating out of um, the Marriott, uh, or a luxurious hotel, they said, which, uh, which is the Marriott in Zamalek and that they were editing footage to manipulate the footage to make Egypt uh, look like it was undergoing uh, a civil war. But clearly, uh, there's been a, a crackdown against Al Jazeera and against any, uh, uh, any media that gives a platform for opposition voices. Right now, government officials cannot even say to journalists whether it's a crime to publish an interview with a member of the Muslim Brotherhood. Uh, so, so that's the framework now that journalists are trying to operate in. And it's, uh, it's coming all amidst this really heavy crackdown on dissent in general. Uh, the Al Jazeera correspondent Peter Grusty got a letter um, out of the prison um, from Torah prison that's saying that two of his colleagues, um, uh, Bahar and Fahmi, are being held in uh, what's known as a more draconian scorpion prison, which is held for members of, uh, of terrorist organizations, um, because, of course, they're being considered um, a Muslim brotherhood. And uh, he said that um, uh, one of his colleagues uh, needs hospital treatment, Fahmi, uh, but he's not getting that hospital treatment. So talk about how these journalists are being treated, and then overall, beyond even Egyptian journalists, the number of Egyptian protesters that are being held in uh, jails today. Well, uh, Peter Greste has been held in uh, a wing of the same prison that is a little, be with a slightly better conditions. He's actually uh, in the cell right next to Ali Abdel Fattah, who is a very prominent uh, blogger and activist who has been, been in prison since uh, late November. Uh, and he's, uh, but he's kept in his cell 20 hours a day, allowed out only four hours a day. He does have access, though, to books and to uh, writing materials. And he penned two very moving letters from prison describing his conditions. Uh, but also talking about the general uh, state of uh, the country and this crackdown on the press in Egypt. Uh, as I mentioned, the two other uh, Al Jazeera English journalists are, are being held in this maximum security wing. Uh, they're held with people like Mohammed Zawahri, who's the brother of Ayman Zawahri, the, the head of Al Qaeda. Uh, Mohammed Fahmi has a, had a, a broken shoulder uh, when he was arrested. Uh, from a previous injury, and it was aggravated during his arrest. He's been de denied medical treatment. Uh, his family, who recently visited him just this, uh, a few days ago, said that he looked like his spirit had been broken. And we, we've uh, discussed many times in Democracy Now! the effect that solitary confinement can have. And they've been held in 24-hour solitary confinement uh, for a month now, and allowed out only for, for interrogation. Uh, as far as protesters being held, it's very difficult to get an accurate number uh, of uh, uh, the number of people that, are, that have been imprisoned. I mean, Egypt's jails are bursting with prisoners. Uh, they're by one count by a group called Wiki Thawra. Uh, they put it at 21,000 people have been arrested since the ouster of Morsi. Uh, every day we hear people being uh, rounded up on the streets. The primary target of uh, these arrests have been the Muslim Brotherhood, Muslim Brotherhood members uh, in Cairo, uh, across the Delta, in the South. Uh, but, but the crackdown has widened beyond that and is now targeting uh, anyone who voices any kind of opposition or dissent to the current military-backed government. It has targeted prominent uh, uh, intellectual voices like Amr Hamzawi, who's probably the most uh, prominent public intellectual in Egypt. Uh, it's, it's targeted uh, uh, Professor Ahmed Shaheen, who's been uh, charged with espionage charges now. Uh, he t teaches also at the American University in Cairo, he used to teach at Harvard and Notre Dame, and is now in the United States. So uh, this is really coming amidst uh, this, this widening uh, uh, silencing of any opposition voices, and it's become difficult for anyone to speak out, and it's become very difficult for journalists uh, to operate as well. You mentioned the former lawmaker and political scientist, Amr Hamzawi, who was also charged. He was charged for insulting the judiciary in a tweet? 
Yeah, this was a tweet that he sent out uh, while Morsi was in power in June, right before his ouster. And it was a tweet where he criticized uh, the, uh, the sentencing or the, the outcome of a, of a trial that targeted uh, over 40 NGO workers uh, who were arrested at the end of 2011, or, or there was a, a raid of their offices in 2011. So he sent this tweet out, and he's been charged in, a, in a, this a very wide uh, case that uh, has people across the political spectrum named in it, both opponents and supporters of Mohamed Morsi, uh, and accused of insulting the judiciary, which is a crime in this country. So uh, he's uh, facing a travel ban. He had to cancel travel plans to go. And he's really been a very moderate voice, someone who's spoken out uh, against the, um, the military ouster of Morsi, but also is very vocal in his opposition to Morsi, uh, Morsi's abuses as well. So uh, the, the current regime is simply brooking no dissent whatsoever. Sharif, we have to break, but I want you to stay there uh, so when we come back we can talk about the possible presidential run of the military ruler right now, Mohamed Morsi appearing again in court, and just what was the third anniversary of the Egyptian revolution like in Tahrir? Sharif of is Democracy Now! correspondent. He's speaking to us directly from Cairo. He is overlooking Tahrir Square. His piece in the nation is Egypt in year three. Stay with us.